the new garden I have noticed this morning that a lot of weeds are already starting to sprout up and putting a new layer of compost is something that I had wish I had done before I planted all my new plants however I needed to get the plants in the ground so I'm having to do it after the fact which is okay it's just not ideal so we are on our way to get some compost and then hopefully we'll be laying down some compost on the beds Another thing that I want to do is get some, maybe some hay or something to put over that compost just to really make sure that the weeds are suppressed because it's really hard to suppress weeds and kind of like the in-ground gardening um, without using some sort of like landscape fabric, which I might do for aisles. I don't know. I'm keeping a lot of different things in mind about how I can keep back the weeds as much as possible and um, we tilled the garden at first, but I'd like to kind of move forward with a no-till method from here on out if I can, because I feel like that's better for the garden and uh, just the environment in general. So I am trying to keep that in mind as well and just trying to figure this whole new process out um, since it is all still very, very new to me, this style of gardening. So we are just here to get compost and we fill up the buggy, we put tarp down and they'll put the compost on top of the tarp and that's how we pick up our compost. All right, here's how the garden is looking so far. But if you look closely, you see all sorts of weeds. All right, so we are about to start shoveling some of the compost we just bought into a wheelbarrow so that we can take it down the line and start composting some of these plants and giving them the nutrients that they need. So compost is really good about adding organic matter and microorganisms and nutrients to help put the plants back into the soil. Um, the soil has not had anything or any amendments really um, in a very long time. It hasn't been used in a long time. So I think that's really necessary to get these nutrients back in. It also can help um, with kind of some weed suppression a little bit, being able to kind of make a barrier for those weeds to not be able to come up as easily. Um, so there are lots of good things that adding compost is really, really good for. You can tell this compost is nice and fresh because it's still like hot and steamy. <laughs> I am back for another day of composting and I just want to show you how good everything is looking so far. Everything is really starting to perk up after being transplanted and moved. Um, the compost piles are looking good. I just planted some garlic. Some of the beans um, and seeds that I directly planted are starting to pop up so that's really exciting as well and flowers are starting to bloom. Everything is just looking so, so, so good. So one of the issues or things that I struggled with with this type of gardening style um, is that I'm used to really doing a sort of polyculture environment and adding in a lot of different plants all mixed into the same bed. And so I really struggled trying to figure out how to do that in this kind of in-ground market style gardening. Um, but I think I'm kind of getting the hang of it and kind of sorted it out for at least in some spots so that it'll kind of look diverse and kind of mimic nature naturally instead of just being a monoculture of just one crop um, down every single line. 
so you can see here I have all of my flowers and herbs and I planted a lot of different ones down the entire row and then I planted I moved some of the garlic that I had at my other garden over um, so I have marigolds and bronze fennel and that's a bachelor button and this is um, I think it's called a cactus redmond um, zinnia that is starting to bloom look how pretty I love love zinnias one of my favorite flowers for sure um, some anise hyssop some dandelion and so it's kind of mixed like that and down the entire row and I think I want to come back on this other side um, and add another set of flowers and herbs and then in the front on this other one it's kind of the same thing except I'm gonna put onions down the front and do the same thing I have some dahlias that came in everywhere you see like a popsicle stick I planted another dahlia and so there's plenty of those down the line as well as zinnias and more herbs the squashes are all looking really nice Then, I don't know if you can see down here. You can see how bad the weeds are compared to where we just composted over in these aisles. And I think I'm going to put straw out over the compost too, just to really try to m minimize the amount of weeds that we are getting. Um, but you can see all of the beans are starting to pop up. Isn't that exciting? Also along here, I have more tomatoes and flowers, um, bush beans in the front here. These are going to be all potatoes that my cousin gave me to plant. Um, lots of basil and tomatoes over here and lots of lettuces. There's another little zinnia. So pretty. Um, and so all of the lettuces are starting to perk up. And in the back here, I've done all okra and sunflowers. I'm gonna do some like little bush um, called zipper peas that really do well in the heat in the front. And where I might do them somewhere else. I haven't figured out exactly where I'm gonna do them, but um, all sorts of stuff is popping up, but also a lot of weeds. I know I mentioned this already or mentioned some parts of this, but compost is really good for um, adding organic matter that's decaying back into the soil and help giving nutrients that as it decays it provides nutrients for the plants. It's really good if you do a thick layer of compost to help suppress any weeds and it's really good for the kind of no-till gardening method to go ahead and add compost every year. Um, it really just helps keep it where you don't have to come back until the garden the next year. Um, obviously it's not perfect and sometimes it can take time for that to really develop and be a good system. So I am not deterred by the fact that I'm starting to still see weeds come up through my compost. I'm just gonna keep um, going about it and just keep learning about this new method. So I think I mentioned this before too, but I typically like to do bulk purchases of soil or compost when I'm starting anything new or filling even when I did my raised beds. I always did bulk purchases of soil and sometimes compost because it really reduces the amount on the price point for those items because one of the most expensive things that you'll find when you start a new garden or are composting or anything like that is that the soil is so expensive and so I've always found that to be one of the biggest expenses in the garden and so when I'm planning a new garden space or planning a new raised bed system I always try to keep in mind how much money it's going to cost to actually fill the soil in those places and because soil is one of the biggest determinants of how well your garden is going to do and the microorganisms and the life within the soil which is why no-till is so important to help kind of benefit those microorganisms and help them to thrive. So soil is just one of those really big things that you really don't want to skimp on and you really want to make sure that you are investing in good soil and good soil health and taking the time and the money sometimes to make sure that you're doing that. So we have gone and gotten another cart full of compost that we are planning to put out on the garden and even if it takes time and it's not something that I can do very quickly in one day, I'm just going to slowly pay for it and as I go and keep adding the compost down the rows. So that's another good thing too is that sometimes you don't have to do everything all at once. You can kind of do it as you go and you know pay for it a, you know one month at a time. So 
I remember even when I started my raised beds, I just started, even though I knew the entire layout that I had planned and wanted to do, I did just started with my two beds, filled those in with soil, planted those, and then I added the other two, and then I added another two. And so that way it didn't break the bank and I was able to slowly build my garden space. Also, I just saw the first butterfly of the season in this new garden space, which is really exciting because you guys know I really care about the pollinators. Oh. There wasn't ever really a lot of flowers or things here to benefit them, and now there is, and so I saw the first butterfly, which is really exciting. Y'all, how beautiful is this butterfly? It's just been flying around. But we are getting there. Also, look at this beautiful Nia. Isn't that so pretty? And then we have some peach ones somewhere. So, look at this little peachy Zinnia. So, I'm growing cream, lime, red blush, and Oklahoma salmon, so I'm not sure which was which, I think this might be Oklahoma salmon. So thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're enjoying seeing how I'm shaping up this new garden space and seeing it grow with me. And I am so excited just for the spring and for everything that I'm growing this year. And I would love to know in the comments below what you're excited to be growing this year as well. So anyways, I hope you're all having a wonderful week and I will see you all soon. Bye guys. Oh, and my favorite thing that I'm excited to grow this year is definitely, if they sprout, the Black Eyed Susan Vine. And, hmm, oh, and maybe the dahlias because I'm new to growing dahlias. I planted them for the first time last year, and so this year I'm expanding my collection and I bought a lot more tubers, which I told you I planted. So, I'm very excited to see how those turn out as well.